I'm here today as an entrepreneur that's trying to build a uh, fried chicken empire. Uh, but I have a secret. I don't really love fried chicken. What I do love is a little more unusual. I absolutely love human resources. Not many people love HR. I think we've been, <laughs> I think we've been programmed to resent HR in, in many ways. But I'm hopeful that by the end of this conversation you feel a little differently. Because when I talk about HR, I'm not talking about pink slips or paperwork or trust falls. <laughs> I love HR because I believe HR is the single most efficient tool we have to tackle the cycle of poverty. And it's not just about social impact. I believe we have an opportunity to solve an enormous economic problem in our community. So I've been on this adventure for about 10 years trying to prove this thesis. And today, my intent is to tell you why I'm on the adventure to begin with, but also share some lessons that I learned and talk about collectively what we have to do about it. So for as long as I can remember, I've had two paths in my life. The first was a path of entrepreneurship. So I, I think I've been a hustler since the fourth grade. <laughs> and as I grew and matured, I realized a few things. And one is that conventional jobs will probably make me unhappy. And also, that I'll probably be unsuccessful in them. The second path I was on was a path of service and social impact. So through my family, through my friends, through a church, through my clubs, all of these things, I picked up a lot of trash, I organized a lot of cans of food, and I served a lot of soup. And at some point in my life, these paths started to converge. So here I am, my second year in college, two out of four years into the privilege of just figuring out what I want to do with my life, a privilege not everybody has. And I start getting really discouraged and really depressed about service. So I realized that day by day, bowl by bowl, I could keep serving soup, but I'm doing nothing to shorten the line. And so my intention started to think, no matter volunteerism or service, I got to find a way to tackle the problem that's causing the line to begin with. So thankfully, there's a name for this. It's called social entrepreneurship, finding a strategic way to solve problems sustainably and long term. And thankfully, our community has a great ecosystem for it. But so I had this moment, and at that point, it was figuring out about what I could do. And so thankfully, uh, after eight to 10 years or whatever this adventure has taken me, I've had a lot more failure than success up until this point. So enter Hot Chicken Takeover, the beginning of my fried chicken empire. Hot Chicken started in April of 2014. As of now, November of 2015, and as of this week, in fact, we've actually served over 150,000 pieces of chicken. Just crazy. We serve it in an environment that feels kind of like a family reunion or maybe a church potluck. And the business has allowed us the opportunity to hire 40 people sustainably. And so Hot Chicken takes a pure intention of how we hire. We intentionally hire adults that have been adversely impacted by this cycle of poverty. Mainly, we're hiring folks affected by homelessness or incarceration. So that latter piece amounts for about 65% of our workforce. And what we've achieved as an outcome is we have the most reliable, motivated workforce in this community. I'd throw them up against anybody else in our industry, and I want to talk about why. But I've learned some lessons from Hot Chicken and the other things that we've worked on. So lesson number one, poverty is super, really complicated. We work in an industry with entry-level jobs and entry-level wages for the most part. The reality is there's two groups of people that generally apply for these jobs. Students and the much larger group are a lot of adults trying to get a couple steps ahead of a bad situation. So this is the group adversely affected by poverty. And if you're living in poverty, which I haven't, so I've gained a lot of education from the people that I've built relationships with, but there is a tremendous amount of chaos. And day by day, your role is to manage a crisis so that you can get through to the next day or the next week. 
What's crazier is in our community, we have an intention that what people need to do is pull themselves up by their bootstraps. I call BS. What we've realized, yeah, what, what we've realized is not everybody has bootstraps. Not everybody has boots. So we have to think about it differently. And there's a huge amount of employers out there that believe legitimately that people are going to take all of this chaos and show up to work and check all their baggage at the door. Lesson number two, the personal becomes professional. You can't check all your baggage at the door if this is the life and this is the cycle you're in. And so all of these personal instabilities find a way to translate themselves into a professional setting. And what ends up happening is employers play the cost for it in a really significant way. Turnover, lost wages, training, shrinkage, conflict, you name it. All of these things that were once conceived as just a personal instability become professional instability. So potato, potato, turnover, poverty, it's the same thing. And we have to think about something to do with it. And the reality is that what we can do about it involves the inherent power of the people we're talking about creating jobs for. If you're living in this cycle, you are a problem solver, you are a troubleshooter, and you are capable. All of these skills become really key professional assets for somebody. And if an employer can build the right culture and infrastructure to harness this power of people, really big things can happen. And so the fourth lesson, and the most important, is that HR has some serious potential to be disruptive if done right. It's clearly been disruptive in our business. So what's amazing is we've had 50% retention of all of our staff since we started. And that seems like, well, you only kept half of them. The reality is that's four times better than most people in our industries. And that also means that we've spent four times less money on rehiring, training, wages, everything like that. It's solving a serious economic problem as a small business and employer. So with permission, I want to share a story of one of our employees um, that proves that HR can be disruptive. Her name's Shannon. So Shannon was incarcerated for five years because of charges associated with drugs and theft. She leveraged her incarceration in a magnificent way to find mentors, uh, a plan, and resources, and sobriety. Upon exiting, we were really grateful that we were part of her plan and able to uh, be an employer that was open to bringing her in. Because the one favor we do at Hot Chicken is to choose to judge somebody by their future, not by their past. And the outcomes of that are unbelievable. So since being with HCT, six months into it, Shannon has done some amazing things in her personal life. She's reunited with her son, who's out of state. She's gained a house. She's gained a car. And what's crazy is she's been promoted five times at Hot Chicken in six months. We literally just had to create a job for her to become an administrator, manage the front of the house. And at the end of the, every day, she gathers all of the cash from the registers and puts them into our safe. A really unbelievable example of how somebody takes the reins of their own life and blows it up, and we get to benefit from that as an employer. We want to be part of more stories like Shannon's. So the way we've done that is that we've built a unique benefits platform. That benefits platform has three key things. The first is around financial stability, personal stability, and professional development. The general idea with this is that these are benefits that are earned and chosen by our employees. They're not given. They're not required. There's a lot more dignity and pride in that than having to stand in that soup line. And this makes a big difference for us. But this is just what we do. And we're here because what we do isn't enough. So what I ask of you is this is where you come in. The first thing is to acknowledge that this is a massive problem. There are 100 million Americans living at 200% of the federal poverty guideline. What that means in real terms is that there are huge, a third of the families in our community are living on less than $40,000 a year. That's a big group of people that are navigating this chaos every single day to survive. Hot Chicken is currently working with 
seven hundred thousandths of a single percent of that problem. We have to move the needle on that, and I believe HR can be that. So the first thing we ask is that you be reflective, both personally and professionally, about how that cycle, about how those symptoms of poverty affect your life, your family's life, your business, or your job. Do yourself a favor and acknowledge that you'll be a lot better served by judging people by their future, not by their past. And ultimately, when you get tired of reflecting, which I hope lasts like 12 hours, you do something bigger about it and you move to action and you join us. We're a small piece of the pie. And even if our business grows to 10 to 20 to 30 units, we're never going to even hit a single percentage point of this problem. So join us by choosing to harness the power of people in an effective way in a work environment. Find a way to replicate this model, to replicate this benefit system, and apply it to the places you work or the places you own. We love chicken. Uh, we like chicken. <laughs> but the reality is we love our workforce. And I believe all of you could love your workforce too. Thank you for having us.